So yeah. I think all of us, I mean, me specifically, and training very hard, often, all the time, eating as much food as I could possibly shove in my face to put on weight. And then one day it was like, I am burnt the fuck out. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously, the, you're well before that, your body stopped building muscle. Right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The all of those things stopped. I and mean, then look at him. Instead of yeah, instead of um, thinking like, hey, maybe I should chill out. It was like I need more, more. gas pedal. Yeah, and that's more what people start resorting to steroids. Where like, oh, I just don't have the genetics, so therefore I need. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like before, that you should even think about that shit. I tried to dissuade everybody from doing that. Now, to be honest. Um, but because you, you have so much in the tank, so many things that you can do to move the needle before you ever would ever want to consider that stuff. Yeah. And um, I, nobody in fitness, nobody in bodybuilding is talking about this stuff. Maybe in fitness, but not in bodybuilding. Um, just because, it, you know, we, as a culture, we attach to work harder, work harder. You know, we're always attached to these external mechanisms. We're attached to, you know, run faster, jump higher, lift more, score more goals, whatever it may be. Um, it's fucking bullshit. When, yeah. it, when it comes to changing your physique, what happens on the outside doesn't matter, except if it creates the internal response you're after. So we, what I'm focused on is teaching people about the internal focus. What's happening inside your body? Is this stress you're subjecting your body to on the outside creating the internal response you want? And if it's not, why are you doing it? So if I'm trying to build muscle, I'll make sure the stress you're, d- you're doing, every single minute of that stress, every, every millimeter of every rep is contributing to the stress that I'm trying to accomplish, which in this case is I'm trying to challenge this muscle. If it's not contributed, don't do it. Right, so th- all these things, like everybody's so attached to uh, lift more, lift heavier, that's going to get you better results. Well, no, it's not, not necessarily. Just because I put more weight on the bar doesn't mean my muscles are actually doing my work. Yeah, yeah this you is know? a very clear example of if you had three sets of ten at seventy percent mm-hmm. on your workout, didn't matter the exercise, right? And you focused on contracting the muscle more, or didn't focus. So did you execute the same exact repetition, the same volume mode, right? Yep. It couldn't. It could be totally two totally different outcomes if it's focused on quality of muscle contraction, for example, focusing on a mind-muscle connection. You can get completely different actual adaptations after six, eight weeks. You would have a lot more muscle than somebody else, even if they did the exact same right. volume, right? The same. Yep. So those numbers are sort of important at some level, but at some level, like what you're saying is just make the muscle contract very hard. hard. And, and yep. it doesn't really matter if that's the exact same exercise, if what the rep load is, because it's the internal stress you're trying to get to, which causes... The adaptation, right? Absolutely, yeah. And that's where people go wrong is we're all attached to, I'm going to bench for for chest, I'm going to squat for quads. Or the numbers, getting super attached to the numbers, right? Right, yeah. How many reps I do, sets I do. Yeah, none of that stuff matters, man. What matters is am I subjecting my body to this uh, this specific stress that I'm trying to subject it to? And then a deeper level than that, then we start getting into, okay, well, what's the actual biochemical response that's happening? But even before any of that matters, before the the sets and reps and, and the type of biochemical response matters, you got to standardize that stimulus so you know you're actually doing the thing you want to do. Like you got to make sure that the right muscle I'm trying to train is actually training, right? Your body has all these different solutions when you're exercising. Your body can use any number of these different muscles to, mm-hmm. to move a load. That doesn't mean it's the one you want. It's not always the case, right? I can show you how to do a bench press without ever using your pecs at all. Like what? But I mean, I thought that's a chest exercise. No, it's not a chest exercise unless you set it up properly to be a chest exercise. Mm-hmm. It may not be a chest exercise. So let's figure out how to do things for your body because you guys are all built differently than me. And then challenge the muscle. And then once we've standardized the stimulus, once it always looks exactly the same, now I can quantify and go, okay, I know exactly what every rep is giving me. Now it makes sense for me to manipulate sets and reps. Then it makes sense for me to manipulate X's and O's. But before that, if I can't standardize the stimulus, how the hell do I know, you know, if, if it's actually doing what I want it to do? How many bodybuilders on are actually getting into the depth of this? Is it everyone at the top is got their own specific exact way they're doing their own specific bench press to the rep schemes exactly no. like they need, or is this just something that you've no, dug no, into? Nobody's talking about this stuff. So here's the thing, man. If, if you want to be, um, if you want to be a 100 meter sprinter, um, chances are you're not going to be a 100 meter sprinter. You're never going to be as fast as Usain Bolt. Just not Usain Bolt. Yeah. Um, so why is Usain Bolt Usain Bolt? Because he's Usain Bolt. He's yeah. built that way. He's got this beautiful mechanics to be a great sprinter. All the guys who are in the top 10, 20, 30 bodybuilders in the world could do anything yeah. and build muscle, right? It's mechanics. Their body just naturally fits in these exercises really, really well. Not everyone's like that. So if you want to learn how to build muscle for your body, you've got to learn how to do it for your body. And the worst thing you can do is go watch other pro bodybuilders. Like, it doesn't matter what they do. They just accidentally fit into these exercises. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you watch me squat, everyone goes, man, Ben's a great squatter. I should. There, he's got great quads, therefore I should squat. 
it's a terrible, terrible thought process, right? Yeah. No, it's like, no, j- you're not built like me. So let's find what works for you to challenge this muscle. And don't be attached to what it looks like on the outside. Is a leg press better than a high squat? Is better than a squ- uh, squat? I don't fucking know. Yeah. It depends what works best for you. Yeah. How does that play into, I mean, are you coaching people? And sure. how do you talk to people about exercises? Because it's, I mean, so you talk about Usain Bolt. When he talks about running the 100, he knows exactly how many steps he's taking. Mm-hmm. He knows when he's picking his head up. He knows how many steps he's in. Sure. And, you know, he gets to the last 15 meters, whatever it is, and then he's like, you know, I, at that point I'm probably winning the gold medal and I can look around. I've got three steps left, whatever it is. How are you able to train people? Because, I mean, to sit down and find what is the best for each person, um, you know. It's actually how do you, not, how do you, it's, it's yeah. not as complicated as it sounds. Okay. Because there's, there's a very few things that if you just start observing, you can figure it out really, yeah. really quickly. So, you know, we were speaking about this earlier. Um, why were the bodybuilders in the 1970s better? Because they didn't have anybody before mm. them mm. To, to model. So they actually had to learn. They had to watch. So they'd come in the gym in these string tank tops and really short shorts, and they would watch the muscle contract. So they'd do an exercise, and they'd go, oh, when I do this, that contracts. I need to build more of that, so let's do more of this. So rather than being attached to watching some dude on, on YouTube and go, oh, that guy's got huge pecs, therefore I should do that exercise, they just observed. And if people did that, if they just go, oh, man, and when I do this exercise, it looks like that's working. I need to do more of that life would be so much easier. They would actually have better bodies just by observing, like, when I do this, this happens. That's great. Rather than mindlessly now watching YouTube, watching whomever on, on yeah. you know social media and going, oh, I'm just going to do it exactly like that because that must be the right way to do it. That's not the reality, right? Um, so that this is the disconnect that people are having is um, not watching anybody else and just figure out what works for you. So uh, what, is, what does a muscle do? Contract. Contracts. That's it. And here's the reality. Every muscle has two ends. It pulls one end closer to the other. That's it. Yeah. Like the one end is one end is stabilized. How dare you make this so simple? Right. <laughs> I've been doing well, this forever. <laughs> fuck. Trying to figure <laughs> it out. You just. <laughs> well, so let's so about simple. This, right? So every every muscle has an origin and insertion. Origin is typically closer to the midline. Insertion pulls closer to the midline. That's it. Now, what? Do, there's some levels on top of that. I want I want to stabilize the origin as much as possible. No extraneous movement because you know the analogy I give is if I have a rope in my hand, both ends of the rope are moving. How much tension am I creating in the rope? Zero, ultimately, or less. If one end is anchored and I'm able to pull on the other end, I can actually create some tension in that rope. So we need one end completely anchored. So in most cases, that's going to be your pelvis. For If you're training your lower body, it's going to be your scapula. If you're training your upper body, you need to have those completely anchored in order for you to actually create a substantial amount of tension in that other in the other end of the muscle and sub- tension in motion. Um, so that's it, man. Like learning some very b- basic things about stabilize this one end. Now pull this closer to here. Now slowly using the muscle to resist, that to decelerate this load. Now take it the other way. Now take it as far away as you can and find length in that muscle. Yeah. Now bring it back the other way. And the reality is muscles don't move very far, right? So people watch a uh, range of motion. You're like, hey, man, well, your, your, your arm moved like 24 inches. Yeah, but the muscle only moved three inches or, or sometimes two inches. So how much l- a potential for loss force is that right like if yeah. i if i move a centimeter in the wrong direction i could be losing 20 30 40 percent of potential stimulus just by inc- you know maybe just a little bit of extraneous movement unnecessarily so um locking your body in and then just watching the muscle contract and you know, if i'm trying to train my lower pecs it's literally like bring the insertion close to the lower origin if i'm trying to train, train my upper pec it's like bring this insertion on my shoulder closer to the upper pec and that's it mm. like, and that's where we all failed so much when we were learning this thing in the bodybuilding magazines right. Watch bench it's like press. yeah bench press but all of a sudden you realize like this overextended yeah, but no, shoulder even position. Even before that, the angle of the sternum. Like we all have a very different angle, right? Yeah. Some people are very flat. Some people are very uh, broad. Completely different exercise for you and for me. You lay in a bench press, you're probably using all upper chest and no lower chest. I lay in a bench press, it's almost like a decline. What, yeah. what most people would, de- would think is a decline. I literally, most of you guys, probably all of you guys, would do a flat bench press and work more of your upper chest because yeah. – because it's just the way your body sets up, <laughs> right? But most people, if, if I said, hey, man, that's an upper chest exercise, they think I'm crazy. But for, for 80% of the population, this is observation and completely anecdotal, 80% of the population, is a flat bench press is an upper chest exercise or not even a chest exercise. Sometimes they don't use any chest because it's, it's all so shoulders for me. Yeah. All so shoulders. I, well, I have in, no pecs. In five minutes, we could fix it, man. In literally five minutes. Sold. Done. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> um, you, you, when you talk about numbers, like we're classically and we still teach in class, it's – you know, it's 10 to 12 reps, 70, 80% or something like that. Do you find that still true? Because the textbook true? says so. <laughs> no. What have we read in the magazine, yeah. Ben? <laughs> they said we're right. Well, uh, You said bench, and you did this number. Like, right. Is that in the I ballpark? Is it completely wasteless? No, I, like I, dude, I don't disagree with um, X's and O's. I call them X's and O's, sets yeah. and reps. So I don't disagree with them mattering. 
But uh, ultimately, your body doesn't know if it's eight, if it's six. All, all your body knows is, the, I break it down for people in a simple way. You have four phases of muscle contraction. You have concentric, eccentric, isometric, and rest. And how much time you spend in each phase is going to determine the type of biochemical response you get in your body, right? So if I spend a lot of time in concentric, we know it's going to be a little more calorically demanding, maybe a little more metabolic stress. Um, eccentric is going to be substantially more muscle damage. Isometric may be more neurological adaptation, getting your nerve system to fire up a little bit more. And then rest just allows me to determine how much of this metab metabolic stress am I going to allow to accumulate. That's it. So that matters more than sets and reps. So the way I measure these things in my uh, member side is like every every set and rep you do, you're just going to enter the number of reps and the tempo. So now I can go. Ex I can tell you exactly how many seconds you spend in concentric, exactly mm. how many seconds you spend in eccentric, exactly how many seconds you spend in isometric, and then how much rest you spent. And then by that, I can I can deduce what the stimulus was that you subjected to your body. So was it a high amount of concentric, high amount of eccentric, high amount of isometric, high amount of rest, and manipulating. And then we can give you a score based on how to manipulate those things. Right? Mm. That's the easiest way. To, just to me, that makes sense. Sets and reps is great, but the only thing that ultimately matters is time in each of these phases. Do you have a ballpark idea of how much time? I, maybe I'll ask this a different way. Uh, you've got most people in the worlds that we live in, uh, weightlifting for me and CrossFit a little bit more, you know, for you guys and both, are now coming to the realization that, all right, maybe maybe some of this bodybuilding stuff we need to put back yeah. into our program because we're either getting broken or that was we have a huge weakness in our movement because we have an underdeveloped muscle tone. But a lot of them are implementing that in a way where I'm, I'm like, I don't think they really understand – how to build muscle. Right. Um, right. One of the ones, so they're basically what you've talked about is feeling, right? Yep. Like you learn to feel the muscle contract. Right. That's what matters. But how do they work some of the stuff into their CrossFit or their weightlifting programming and not either do way too much and blow themselves out? Or do you have, could you have a guideline at all? Sure. Well, tough, so, no, I mean, th th what are we trying to create, right? We're trying to create resilience. And uh, we're trying to make a body bulletproof. We want to make it absolutely so we're strong everywhere. There's no yeah. weaknesses. Um, you know, we're, we're strong in absolutely every range. Um, so that means getting strong where you're weak. So whatever that means for you, let's identify that and make it strong and then find the exercise or the mechanism, whatever it happens to be, to challenge the muscle where you're weak and get strong where you're weak, right? Mm -hmm. So, that, you know, people attach to, you know, most people injuries, most injuries happen because people are going outside of what they can actively control, right? They go outside of their active range of motion, muscles weak there, your body starts relying on passive structures, so then it gets this uh, inflammation thing. It gets Passive structures being tendons and... Right, yeah, tendons, right. ligaments, joints. So... Um, if we go outside of what we can actively control, the body has no choice, can't use these muscles, it's going to rely on the passive structures. So what we need to do is we need to increase our active range of motion somehow by increasing what most people would go, oh, you got to increase flexibility. It's not flexibility, it's mobility. So I want to be, and, and the only difference is, my, my definition of mobility is what can I actively control? And that comes as a result of increasing stability, right? So right. most people go, I want to get more range of motion, therefore I should stretch. No, because stretching is going to increase your passive range of motion, which you can't actively control. What I need is a range of motion I can control. Right. So how do we do that? Well, we need to challenge those ranges that we are weak in at the extreme of the range with a little bit of tension. Just what we're capable of doing there, man. Sometimes it's bunny for soft contractions, right? But eventually I'm going to become incrementally stronger. And my body goes oh, I'm actually strong here. I can go a little bit further, right? Yeah. Whereas if you keep attaching to, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to force this, like I'm going to you know, put more weight on the bar to force me into a position, what's your body going to do? Your body's going to go, shit, this is hurting me. I need to tighten up and inflame and more, inf more inflammation here, tighten this muscle up more because I need to protect it. Uh -huh. So what most people are doing wrong is they're, they're trying to get strong with the, just the wrong progressive load. It's still, it's still a means of progressive overload got that it, we should yeah. be implementing, but it's got to be like incrementally improving where I'm weak. I can agree with this because I've recently